Hi, right, boys and girls. Today we are on lesson 12 of our solar system unit. And today we're going to specifically be focusing on um, listening to me, Miss Wicks, read you guys um, what we would call our close reading titled Gravity Today. And when you guys are answering your questions today, I'm actually going to be asking a few as I read you this. Just want to get you thinking, thinking about what should you be asking yourself? Um, what should you be thinking about while you are doing a close reading and especially in this type of reading that we're going to look at today? Um, please also notice that when we are going to be answering on our questions on our forms that are also going to be on your Google Classroom, um, we're going to also focus in on our quotation marks, um, something we talked about a while ago, and we're going to bring them back in a little bit today. So you'll see me kind of go from this reading here, and I'm going to bop over to another one of my slides so you can see a little bit of review on quotation marks, and I'm going to include a little video for you guys to watch so it all refreshes your memory. Okay, today's close reading story, Gravity. What exactly holds all of this stuff together in this huge universe? Why don't all these stars and planets just go flying off in any direction all over the universe? Why do they stick together in groups and clusters like solar systems and galaxies? These are excellent questions, and the answer is gravity. Gravity is an invisible force of attraction between objects. It's the force that holds galaxies and solar systems together. It's the force that keeps us firmly planted on planet Earth instead of flying off into space. It's the force that keeps Earth orbiting around the sun and keeps the moon orbiting around Earth. You can't see gravity or touch it, but gravity is present between everything in the universe that has mass. Because of gravity, Every single bit of matter in the universe pulls on every other piece of matter in the universe. I'm going to quickly freeze us right here. The question I want you to think about right now is, why do you think the author uses the phrase? Well, let me go back and find it. It's the force that keeps us firmly planted on Earth. Why do you think the author uses that phrase? I'm going to give you a minute if you're sitting next to a parent or another sibling and you want to talk with them about it, or if it helps you to just think about it in your head or jot it on paper. So when you're answering your form questions, you have it all set. I'm going to say the question one more time. Why does the author use the phrase, it's the force that keeps us firmly planted on Earth, planet Earth? I'm going to keep on moving. And boys and girls, after I ask you a question, and if it helps you, pause my video real quick. Answer your question, whether you're just thinking about it in your head and you're finding it in the text as you're doing that, if you're writing it down so you have something to go back to from when you're answering your question, or even if you're sitting there talking to another um, adult or sibling and whoever you're with. All right, let's get back into here. You and I exert a pull on each other, but because we have very little mass in our bodies compared to celestial bodies, our gravitational pull on each other is very small. So small, we can't feel it at all. Gravity depends greatly on mass. So what exactly is mass? Mass is just the amount of matter in an object. You and I are small compared to, say, a planet or a star. We're made of less stuff, so our mass is much, much smaller. Mass is important when you are trying to understand gravity because the larger the mass, the larger the gravitational pull. So objects with really large masses, like stars and planets, have a really big gravitational pull on other objects. And objects with really small masses like you or me, have really small gravitational pulls on other objects. So small, we don't even notice the pull at all. 
The more mass an object has, the more gravity or pull it is capable of. Because Earth has so much mass compared to all of the, other, the things that are on the surface of the Earth, its surface gravity keeps the things on Earth from flying off into space. You, your house, your bed, a ball you throw up into the air, all of these things stay on Earth due to gravity. Even the Earth's atmosphere and the oxygen we breathe are held close to Earth by its gravitational pull. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to do a quick pausing point question. What is mass? Okay, hopefully you either paused me or you got something put on or spoken to or written down for that. And I want to ask one other question before I move on. What is the connection between gravity and a gravitational pull? So you see we have gravitational pull in our boldface words here. And up here we have gravity. What is the connection or how does gravity and gravitational pull relate? What do they have in common? Okay, I'm going to keep moving on. Gravity also causes you to have weight when you stand on a scale. Earth's gravity pulls down on you. The more mass you have, the harder the pull and the higher the numbers on the scale. Think about an astronaut who is standing on the moon. The astronaut stays on the surface of the moon because of the moon's gravity. If the astronaut stood on a scale on the moon, the astronaut's weight would be six times less than the weight of the same astronaut on a scale on Earth. So a person who weighs 60 pounds on Earth would weigh only 10 pounds on the moon, about the weight of a bag of flour because the moon has less mass than Earth and its force of gravity is not as strong. But the astronaut does not get pulled off the moon and back through space to Earth. Earth still has a larger mass than the moon and it still has a larger gravitational pull than the moon. But because the astronaut is far away from Earth and very close to the moon, the gravitational pull of the moon has the most effect. It keeps the astronaut on the moon. I'm going to do a brief pausing point question here, boys and girls. I want you to describe the relationship between gravity and your weight that would be on a scale. What is the relationship between gravity and your weight on a scale. All right, I'm going to keep cruising on. That's another important thing to know about gravity. The distance between two objects affects the gravitational pull between them. Objects that are close to each other pull harder than objects that are farther away. The effect of an object's gravitational pull lessens as you get farther away from it. The sun has a lot more mass than Earth does, but the sun is also a lot farther away. And because we are on the surface of Earth, Earth's gravity has a much bigger effect on us, keeping us firmly on Earth, one of the many benefits of gravity. The sun contains 99% of all the mass in our solar system. Because the sun has more mass by far than anything else in the solar system, it also has more gravity than anything else in the solar system. The sun's gravity, or force of attraction, is so strong that it constantly pulls the planets toward it. 
You may be wondering why the planets don't crash into the sun if the sun is pulling on them. Don't worry, that never happens because the planets are also moving really fast in their own orbits around the sun. The combination of the planet's own speed and the sun's gravitational pull toward it is what keeps the planets constantly circling in orbit around the sun. It's a perfect balance. The planets continue in their predictable movements around the sun. Sometimes gravity is so powerful that a black hole is formed, an object or area with an extremely strong gravitational pull. There are many black holes in space, and a black hole's gravity is so strong that once something gets close enough, nothing can escape its gravitational pull, not even light. Astronomers find black holes in space by noticing the movement of objects around them. You can't see gravity, but you can observe the way the force of gravity affects objects. Scientists are still learning about black holes, like many other things in outer space. On a clear night, we can often see the moon moving across our night sky. Have you ever been curious about why Earth has a moon? Many scientists think that about four and a half billion years ago, there was a massive collision between Earth and a very large asteroid. The information they have gathered shows that the moon may have formed from the leftover debris from this amazing impact. Earth's gravity was able to hold the moon in its orbit. There is a strong gravitational pull between Earth and the moon. The moon's gravity pulls on all of the things on the Earth, including people. But the Earth's gravity is strong enough to keep us on Earth. The moon's gravity also pulls on Earth's oceans, but the Earth's gravity pulls back, and it's a good thing it's stronger. The moon's gravity is just strong enough that it can move the water on Earth enough to cause tides in the oceans. Tides cause the regular rise and fall of the ocean's waters. People can see the effects of tides if they are at the seashore. High tides cause the waves to come high up on the beach, and when low tides occur, the waves don't come up as far. Low tide is a good time to walk the beach and look for shells and creatures that live in the sand. So yes, the powerful effects of gravity can explain a lot of interesting things in the universe. It's what holds our moon in orbit around Earth. It's what causes ocean tides on Earth every day after day. Gravity is why we stay on Earth and why objects we throw into the air come back down. Gravity even helps create new stars and planets by pulling, helping pull together the gases and dust that form them. We can't see gravity, but we can see its effects all around us, on Earth, in our solar system, and throughout our galaxy. I'm just going to give you this page right here, and I will also post this um, inside your Google document. Just a glossary for all the um, bullface words that you saw in this reading. The last thing I want to do real quick is review really quick punctuation marks. Boys and girls, remember punctuation marks. They're punctuation marks used to show exactly what a person says or has said. Okay, example down here. Bob said he eats bananas every day. We put the punctuation, or sorry, the quotation marks before the sentence and at the end after the period. Okay, so make sure that at the end of the sentence, you put your punctuation mark, period, question mark, exclamation point, and then you close it off. Remember, we always said that you want to almost like, it's like you want to shelter the sentence that's being said, okay? The, the person is actually saying he eats bananas every day. You want to shelter what they are saying, okay? And we're going to have a little video to make sure that we remember specifically when and where we are putting those quotation marks in our writing. All right, boys and girls. I hope that was helpful for you guys today. I know it's a little bit difficult when we're trying to do um, all these different readings and questions, but we will get through this, and I hope you guys have a really great rest of your day. We will all be on Zoom all day long today if you have any questions. Have a good one.